Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Good morning to you, 6.30 on your Tuesday, a full report expected soon, looking at the death of Saudi journalists in an embassy in Turkey. We'll take a closer look on what might be in that report. Four people are dead after a gunman opens fire at a Chicago hospital. I'm Laura Podesta. Coming up, you'll hear a witness describe the chaotic scene. 6.30 on this Tuesday, Chile and Missy O'Malley with you. Matt has our forecast in a moment. Our top story this half hour, more than a month has passed since Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi was killed. Yet there are still a lot of unanswered questions about his death. A full report on the matter is expected soon, and John Lawrence fills us in. Sources say the CIA has concluded that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, known as MBS, ordered Jamal Khashoggi's death. But the White House has yet to reach the same conclusion. The president has said it's a complete tragedy. He's been looking for answers. He's directed everybody to go and get those answers. Saudi officials admit the Washington Post columnist's death was premeditated, but deny MBS was part of the plan. Mr. Trump, so far, appearing to resist intelligence, linking the crown prince to the journalist's death. He's supposed to see the full report Tuesday. You know, we also have a great ally in Saudi Arabia. They give us a lot of jobs, they give us a lot of business, a lot of economic development. But some say financial ties shouldn't play a factor in this matter. There are things uh, that we're going to have to confront here soon, and I hope we do it based on the truth, not uh, in something that we simply want to see, because we have a lot invested in the relationship with the Crown Prince. German officials, meanwhile, are taking a strong stand against Saudi Arabia. We've been in close contact with our French and British friends and have decided that Germany will put a Schengen Information Systems entry ban on 18 Saudi nationals who are allegedly connected to the crime. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, the White House did announce sanctions against 17 Saudi officials last week in connection with the killing. MBS was not one of them. 632 now, meteorologist Matt Elwell joins us. Clear, starry skies. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to look at, but it means you better find your ice scraper if you're heading to work here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little, little frosty on my windows frosty. this morning, yeah. My coat is ready as we're <laughs> heading outside to the Billion Auto Weather patio. Perfect. Trust me. Uh, temperatures <laughs> this morning, it's not frigid. No. Until you get to West Yellowstone, <laughs> it's six below. Uh, temperatures are expected to build as you head into the afternoon. I mean, there's a caveat for everything. There is, yeah. Uh, temperatures are expected to be into the 40s will probably be above average for both Bozeman and Butte as you head into the afternoon today. We are expecting changes, but not till late in the week. We'll break those down for you in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. It is now 6:33. A domestic dispute turned into a mass shooting at Chicago Hospital yesterday afternoon. Three people were killed. The gunman is also dead. CBS's Laura Podesta has more. A gunman opened fire at Chicago's Mercy Hospital yesterday afternoon, killing two employees and a police officer. It was extreme and it was very loud and it was close. Police say the shooter and his ex fiance Dr. Tamara O'Neill, were arguing in the parking lot when he shot and killed her. When officers arrived, he ran into the hospital where they exchanged gunfire. And they did with the, what the heroic officers always do. They ran towards that gunfire. Officer Samuel Jimenez, a 28-year-old father of three, was fatally struck. An ambulance carried his body in a procession through the streets of Chicago as police cars flashed their lights. This tears at the soul of our city. It is the face and the consequence of evil. Also killed was 25-year-old Dana Less, a first-year pharmaceutical resident. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, Laura tells us police have yet to have released the name of that gunman. And new details on a police pursuit over the weekend in Butte that ended in a motorist crashing into a business on Harrison Avenue is now developing. Butte police arrested 31-year-old Fred Kutzinger of Butte after they tried to take him into custody at a home on federal warrant at about 430 on a Saturday afternoon. He ended up leading the police in a high-speed chase before losing control and crashing into a building on Harrison Avenue and Coben Street. He, uh, his female passenger ran from the crash and police ended up arresting him on the top of the Domino's Pizza building near the crash scene. He did put uh, several people's lives uh, in danger or uh, in risk of getting hurt. 
uh, other motorists, uh, some pedestrians, so they uh, did charge them with several counts of criminal endangerment. No injuries were reported in the crash, but the female passenger is still on the loose and could face charges in the incident. Staying in the Mining City Butte Economic Leaders report, Oregon-based company planning to open a call center <laughs> in Butte that could bring hundreds of jobs to the Mining City. MTN's John Amy tells us what kind of jobs will be offered and what the company does. The Oregon-based company FCR is expected to open a call center here in Butte, bringing much-needed jobs to the mining city. It's extremely significant for us. Um, you know, there's a great opportunity for our workforce, you know, to get back in there, the folks that would like to, and there's opportunities for management and other um, to move up. More than 300 jobs will be available at this Butte location, which will be used as an outsourcing call center to give people information over the telephone, text messages, and social media. Economic officials say FCR is a good company offering good jobs. It would be great job opportunities, um, entry-level job opportunities. Um, they'll, they're full-time jobs. They come, they're, have benefits attached to them. Um, and so they're a great spot for people to get their foot in the door. Um, and they do, like I said, they do have management opportunities also. FCR is looking at at least two existing buildings in Butte to locate the call center. But city officials won't identify those locations yet. They need a, a big open floor plan and, and on-site parking. With the recent closing of some major businesses in town, such as this Kmart here, economic leaders say it's welcome news that a major employer is locating here in Butte. It will help fill the gap from, for some of those folks who um, were displaced by the closing of those retail shops. This will give folks an opportunity to go back to work. FCR is expected to have the call center ready by next year. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Now John tells us FCR last year opened a call center in Great Falls. That employs about 250 people. So more to follow on that story for sure. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. And a wood shop at a Great Falls Middle School has taken an entrepreneurial tone. In this week's Montana Made, MTN's Tim McGonigal takes us to an Electric City Enterprise uh, learning what it takes to succeed in business. This isn't your average middle school shop class. These kids mean business. I've always been interested in business ownership, entrepreneurship. I've been a both. And so I thought it was important to teach kids those values, values and skills. And that's where I, uh, Grizz Biz started nine years ago. Since then, meticulously crafted cutting boards and coasters made by Grizzbiz students have made their way to nearly 20 states in Canada. And Grizzbiz products are a favorite of visitors to the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. Kids with an interest in the program fill out an application, go through an interview process, and if selected, they're involved with everything from ordering supplies and marketing to bookkeeping and production, which includes laser engraving. And depending on how much they produce and sell, they even draw a paycheck. Voldemar says the soft skills learned are the most important. They're indirectly learning those building, but when they have to interact with a customer, talk, defend, say what they're doing, that probably drives home what they're learning. Trying to bring people to the farmer's market or the fair, you have to try to catch people's attention and you have to ask like how their day is and stuff. It's teaching me how to work better as a team and how to communicate better with others. It gives me like leadership. Um, knowledge that I can run my own business if I want to own my own, own business. Kids are also learning the importance of letting nothing go to waste. In the past we would every quarter get rid of about 20 to 24 barrels of scrap wood. Now we get rid of two. The other 20 some barrels goes into coasters which are marketed. Grizzbiz is a year-round venture. About 30 kids participate in the summer program, which includes a booth at the farmer's market and is highlighted by the state fair, where the program engraves the winning plaques. During the school year, about 15 kids are employed. Volkmar is already seeing success stories among former Grizzbiz employees. We had one talk when the governor was here that has his own lawn care business as a senior in high school that uh, has done astronomical five-digit figures 
mowing lawns around Great power. Falls and with a crew yeah. of three other people. Grisbiz recently expanded, starting a similar program at East Middle School in Great Falls called Ram Enterprises. And Volkmar hopes the program continues after he retires, keeping kids like these on the cutting edge of young entrepreneurship. In Great Falls, Tim McGonigal, MTN News. Now, Volkmar says during the uh, Home and Garden Show in the spring, the students typically sell 1,500 coasters. Uh, we have a link to GrizzBiz website on our website as well. <laughs> so Love cool. that. That's awesome. Young people doing a great business. And I like the girls that, hey, we got to get our interpersonal skills going here. That's it. You're working all aspects of the business. Owning your own business and stuff, and they're learning a big chunk of that right there. Very cool. And the stuff looks cool. Very cool. Yeah, nicely done. It is time for a quick break. Here's a look ahead on what's coming up on Montana This Morning and CBS. Hedgehogs are disappearing across the United Kingdom. I'm Gwen Baumgartner in London with the story of a man on a mission to save the spiky creatures. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning as millions head out for Thanksgiving. The tips you need to handle a delayed flight and how to make sure you're home in time. And we go back to school with Louisiana Senator and substitute teacher John Kennedy. He explains why teaching civics is different than what he practices on Capitol Hill. See you at 7.